So we're talking today with Kevin Glastonbury, senior red wine maker, Yolumba Wines, based in Eden Valley. Welcome, Kevin, and congratulations on Yolumba being in the top wineries of Australia 2022 again this year. Thank you, Hugh, and it it is uh, it's a great honour to um, to receive that recognition, but also a great uh, honour as always to spend spend a few moments chatting with you about wine because um, yeah, well, I, I guess both of us go back a, a a reasonable way in this industry, and we've got a lot to uh, a lot to talk about. So uh, thank you for uh, inviting us on. We we do go back a long way. How many years have you now been at Yolumba? Uh, I've been at uh, Yolumba for 23 and a half years or so, and um, so I'm getting, I'm getting the run of the place now. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Um, that's a nice segue into the signature wine because Yolumba, the Hillsmith family, have a great record of retaining uh, their employees and over long periods of time. They have, they, it must be a very good place to work because they tend to hang on to their good staff um, and... The signature is one way that they've celebrated their staff and their family members over many years since 1962, which was the first one, wasn't it? I reckon you must be due for a Kevin Glastonbury signature coming up soon, Kevin. I, <laughs> I, uh, I get asked that a lot, uh, certainly in the last five or six years, because I've been making the wine since, uh, since I started, so 23-odd years. So, um, oh, look, it's, um, it's one of the great parts of of the Yolumba business is the signature and I, and I think it it is even more so for those of us that are at Yolumba and yes you're right Yolumba has been renowned for long um, long employment for for people um, and I guess one of the reasons for that is being a family-owned company that uh, really puts back into the community and really fosters a good community spirit people are more than comfortable working here um, you know, you, you could always go somewhere else and get paid more money, uh, and that's that's normal in this day and age. But the uh, one of the beauties about working at Yolumba is Robert and Annabelle live live on site, so it is very much a family owned company, even though it's larger. So we have that real family values, uh, the honesty, the um, you yeah, know, breeding the right culture here at, at the business, and uh, signature is. It's a wonderful wine, and as you, you're right, 1962, the first vintage released in 1966. So it's a, it's a wine that I guess most people recognise the Alumba name by. Yeah, and you mentioned Robert Hill Smith, who still is the chairman, I think, of the board. He's not the CEO anymore, but he's still, uh, still very involved. But the CEO at the moment is Nick Waterman, is that correct? It is Nick Waterman, who's the, uh, um, who was acknowledged and... Uh, received the honour of uh, the 2018, which is our current release, uh, released back in May, June of this year. And um, look, the that whole process, I know Robert takes extremely seriously and there are many people that have had um, much longer years of service than Nick, who's around about 20, 20 years of service. But it's really, I guess, it's what they do in, in their time at Yolumba and how, how much they put in behind the scenes that's so not just for those of us that perhaps are in in the public eye to a degree but it's those also in the background some seller hands some of the marketing people um, state managers etc and the, the amount of work that they've put in behind the scenes uh, they uh, if they work long enough and hard enough they can certainly receive that accolade and of course the signature is a Cabernet Shiraz blend and your lumber has always hung its hat on Cabernet Shiraz blends, the classic Aussie red blend. I think the 62 was a Cabernet Shiraz, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And for the first 10 years or so, 10 or 12 years, there were a few, um, a few changes to that. There were straight varietals, so straight Shiraz, straight Cabernet released, uh, and then uh, various um, blends released in those first few years. But from the early 70s, it was really a Cabernet Shiraz and one, one wine released every year. Uh, in the 60s, they some years, they released three different signatories. And I think Robert just had a lot of, or not Robert, but um, his father probably had a lot of um, names to, to call on. So, But since the early 70s, it's been a, a, a Cabernet Shiraz. And since the mid-1990s, it's been a Barossa-only Cabernet Sauvignon Shiraz. Um, and moving on to some of the white varieties that you do, Yolumba's 
I guess, been a pioneer and has hung its hat on uh, Viognier in a big way. And you're making some wonderful Viognier's, which uh, the Vigilius is the top one, but you also make a Roussan. And um, I just had the 2020 Roussan recently. I thought it was an absolute cracker. It could be the best one I've tried so far. Uh, a little bit of barrel ferment, a little bit of work going on with the leaves there, perhaps. Interesting. Yeah, line. it's um, it's made in a in a similar vein, similar style to to Virgilius and uh, the other Viognier's, and it's I, I guess I, I I refer to it as a bit of a sleeper, certainly in our company where the focus has been for uh, over over thirty years. I mean, Viognier was first planted by Yolamba back in 19, 1980, 1981, so forty years. But Virgilius has been around since uh, the late 90s, 1998, I think, was the first vintage. So uh, we've really focused all of our efforts on that Rhone varietal. And uh, we are really seeing some stunning wines with Virgilius and the Eden Valley and their, their absolute varietal characters. But the Roussan is, um, you're right, another, uh, another great uh, Rhone varietal. And, and it's, it is different to Viognier. It's not quite as aromatic and it's more savoury and it's... But, but when made properly, it can be uh, it can be quite a stunning little wine. And we have a, a parcel up in Eden Valley, which um, and some growers that we put together a, a wine, as you say, the 2020 is really drinking very, very well at the moment. So as an option, uh, as another wine style, the uh, the Roussan certainly works well. Totally agree. And, and there's something that happens when you ferment these varieties, Viognier and Roussan, uh, in old barrels, um, you don't want the oak character. They don't have to show oak, but there's something magical that happens when you ferment them in older barrels. It brings something extra out of the wine, to me, flavour-wise and texturally. Yeah, look, I think that works for, for a number of varieties. Um, any fermentation in barrel over a period of time and maturation for 6, 9, 12 months, on, certainly on their leaves for, for whites to retain that freshness and brightness, works works really well um, we've never been a fan of using new oak in 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 those in those white varietals um, it it stands out far too much and i think you want the subtlety and that integration of of a slow maturation in in that environment works and and it it enhances that savory character through the palate i think and i like the way it's been held back for a couple of years um, Yolamba does seem to have a policy of not releasing wines too young. Um, just about everybody releases wines these days as soon as they're finished fermenting and they're in the bottle and they're on the market and they're too young some of the time. I mean, this wine is, a, is four years old um, and the Viognier is, uh, I think, the, the 2018, I think, might have been the last Virgilius I tasted. So there's a bit of there's patience at work here. Yes, I think that's always been a Yolamba trait that um, we've always, for many, many years, been been reluctant to, to release the wines too early. Certainly, uh, when they're when you're talking premium wines, uh, commercial wines, there's a there's an expectation that they'll be out within eighteen months, uh, and that's that's understandable. But when it comes to the the more premium offerings at twenty five and thirty dollars and above, we certainly want to make sure that they're they've settled in the bottle. After after any um, filtration and, and bottling process, that uh, they just need to um, have a sleep and, and re get, re recharge their batteries and get ready for um, for when they're open. So in in the case of Signature, it's uh, it's a four year release. Octavius as well, and Kaylee's sitting at um, at five years. So it's certainly a a, a, a patience for uh, for us. Fantastic. Totally approve. I think you're doing a marvellous job. And congratulations again, and thanks for joining us today. Kevin Glastonbury, Senior Red Winemaker, your Lumber Wines, Barossa Valley. Great to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks, you, and thanks very much. All the best. Cheers.